I guess you could say, I've gone full circle. On December 25th, 2020, Omori was released to the world after six and a half years in development. It has now been one year since I initially fell in love with the game, and in order to celebrate the anniversary and Omori's physical release on Nintendo Switch and PS4, I would like to tell you a story about myself, how much the game means to me, and how both Omori and Undertale came into my life in a similar way. Almost scaringly so. I took one look at the Steam page for Omori and was immediately hooked. It uh, reminded me of Undertale. Then I saw the overwhelmingly positive review percentage, and uh, most importantly, the psychological horror tag which is my overall favorite genre. At that moment, I purchased the game and decided to make a commentary series on it while going in as blind as possible. Blind means playing a game without knowing anything beforehand, and I am so glad I did. I was quickly intrigued by Omori's contrasting imagery and underlying story, not to mention pretty scared too, because I didn't know when the horror aspect would go full throttle and if there would be jump scares or not. Unfortunately, I don't think I was in the right mindset in the beginning of my commentary series. I had a hard time focusing and um, taking in information, leading to some pretty embarrassing stupidity. I shouldn't blame myself too much though, considering that real life was occupying most of my mental capacity. As a result, my journey in the world of Omori had a rough start, and that became apparent in um, the commentary as well as the overall quality. A part of me wishes I could go back and redo it with more care, but it is what it is. However, it didn't take too long before the opposite happened, and um, the game got my complete attention. Maybe too much. The contrast aspect that I love about Omori can be seen everywhere from the story and visuals, to the game mechanics and music. In fact, the game starts off with the strongest contrast possible, perfect black and white. Then you see foreboding imagery in red, a realistic door leading into a pastel-colored world with your best friends happy to see you. And this is only the beginning. The soundtrack has become one of my all-time favorites for similar reasons. You got 8-bit and true-to-life sounds. Calm and dark ambience. happy-go-lucky and dramatic music. Melancholic and electronic music. I've been making commentary videos since 2009 and my series on Omori ended up being 50 hours long, which is far more than any other series I've done. I think uh, the Hikikomori route had my most depressing commentary ever. Not necessarily in a bad way though, it felt so real at the time, and it still does. Not to mention it fits eerily well with the game's theme. I understand if it's off-putting for some viewers, and that's fine. I made the series mostly for myself anyway, but it is fun to think of the small chance that someone out there could be watching it and identify with it. I became obsessed with Omori, discovering all the secrets and wonders of its world and narrative. It spoke to me on so many different levels nothing had previously done before. The emphasis on nostalgia and Heraith mixed with psychological horror and anxiety, 
affected me in ways I cannot describe. It broke me. For the first time, I cried sobbingly while recording a video, and I cried the following days as well. I would love to talk about the story in more intricate detail, but I want to keep this video free from spoilers for anyone who has yet to experience Omori. However, something I want to touch upon is the Lost Library. One by one, they fell asleep on the car ride home. It was a long day at the beach, after all, and everyone was exhausted. It was the first to nod off, then the rest. As the sun set over the freeway, his head accidentally dropped onto his shoulder. The sudden jolt wakes him, but he doesn't dare open his eyes. He pretends to be asleep and steadies his breathing. He listens to the sound of the road. He feels the soft sun resting on his skin and the slight tinge of pain on his nose from tomorrow's sunburn. He is happy, very, very happy. And he makes a vow to himself that no matter what, he will remember this moment forever. Lost Library is probably my favorite place in the entire game, and by default one of my favorite places in any fictional world. The way it depicts a memory archive of a much simpler, pure, and innocent time of Sunny's life resonated perfectly with me. If Herith had a physical form, Headspace and its lost library would be it. I've dealt with anxiety and suicidal thoughts plenty of times, and my solace would often be found through escapism, mentally living somewhere else, in a different time. Omori made me realize that I'm not alone feeling this way. It gave me the strength to focus on the good parts of life and try to make the most of it. While it's bittersweet to look back at a time you'll never return to, we shouldn't forget to cherish the memories as we carry on. After all, everything is going to be okay. I was born in November of 92, here in Engenholm, and in a lot of ways, my childhood was similar to that of Sunny's. I grew up in a villa, in a quiet neighborhood with my parents and three older brothers. I hung out with my small group of friends, and we played a wide variety of video games, and uh, watched cartoons, and played outside. I remember us role-playing Pikmin in these woods. I was the Red Pikmin. We used to have a bunch of secret hideout spots called Mygkoya, which uh, translates to Mosquito Hut. And there would be Mygkoya 1, 2, 3, and so on. My favorite was uh, the first one, because we went there on most recesses, even though it was outside of school property. I guess it felt more adventurous when it was prohibited. As a kid, I was generally ecstatic. In school, I was often seen as the class clown, and people would call me remarkable in every sense of the word. I just had so much energy and wanted to do things all the time. In hindsight, I definitely got carried away sometimes. It's uh, interesting to look back to because I appear the opposite today. I do miss it a lot. When you get older, society expects you to act your age and you have to abide by it or else people think you're weird. There were many times when I would play outside alone, playing with sticks, climbing trees, riding a sledge down a snowy hill, among other things. I'd say a big part of that urge still resides in me, 
It's just hard finding situations where I can act out on it. I guess streaming and uh, making crazy commentary is uh, one form of outlet, at least. Although no one in my family was a musician, everyone listened to different uh, genres. And combining that with the music you hear in video games, I think that's what cemented my broad taste. Not just in music, but in general. My childhood was wonderful. Unfortunately, just like when Sunny was 12 years old, it would uh, reach its end. My parents got uh, divorced, and uh, some time later we had to leave the villa and uh, move to an apartment downtown. In August 2013, I would move away from home for the first time, about uh, 230 kilometers away. To keep a long story short, in December 2015, I had to move back home due to economical problems and uh, poor mental health. So there I was, back on square one, in the aforementioned apartment, in this very room. In early 2016, I developed heavy anxiety, which led to suicidal thoughts. Needless to say, it was one of the toughest times I've been through. Fortunately, my best friend at the time made me play Undertale. So I decided to make a blind commentary series on it, documenting my first experience. It really helped me out mentally, it gave me an outlet, something to focus on and look forward to, a world to escape into. For the first time, I had made three full commentary series on a single game in a row, one for each ending, neutral, pacifist and genocide. It's been said a million times before, but Undertale was truly a breath of fresh air. A perfect mixture of modern, retro and nostalgia. A game with astonishing depth, wonderful characters and the best fourth wall breaking I've ever seen. Clever, dynamic and engaging gameplay with a top tier soundtrack. It can't be understated that the entire game was basically made by a single person. Undertale quickly became one of my favorite games of all time, and I believe my bleak outlook on life heavily boosted my love for the game. Undertale inspired a lot of people, and in my case, it filled me with determination to finish my biggest project at the time, which was King of the Horde, a 17 minute progressive metal song about Spike from Friendship is Magic. In August 2016, soon after releasing my song, I would move away from home again, and it was quite an eventful period between then and December 2020. Too much to cover here. If you're curious and want to know more, there are plenty of videos to watch which you can find in the description. But uh, for the purpose of this video, let's skip ahead. It's December 2020, and I found myself once again moving back home due to the same reasons as last time, that being economical problems and um, poor mental health. Coupled with the pandemic taking away Libra game, my main source of uh, social interaction, I felt like it was the right move to make at the time. I had also grown tired of the noisy city life, and I missed uh, the calmness of my hometown. So I was once again back on square one, in the same apartment, in the same room, dealing with heavy anxiety. 
I knew I had to find something to focus on. Luckily, I got a game recommended to me by a friend. And uh, that game was Omori. Before I started the first episode of my commentary series, I did my usual stretching and vocal warm-up. And then I looked in the mirror, and I thought to myself, I guess you could say I've gone full circle. It's now March 2022, and I am once again moving out of here. Even if I wanted it, this story will not repeat itself. My family has had this apartment for 16 years, and the time has finally come to say farewell to it. So many memories and videos were made here, and I will always cherish them. Thank you for watching.